Hello, my friends. Thank you for coming to play with the ideas that I present on my channel. Today, we're going to talk about polarity or opposites. When I did this meditation back in 1990, the visualization that I had was with an angelic form, an angel. And this angel said, you have begun to see the polarity in choices and to see both sides of every issue. When you start to understand that everything has its opposite, then it will be easier for people to understand the seemingly mysterious things in life. You have an expression on earth on the one hand and on the other hand. And this is very accurate for how things are because both hands exist simultaneously. And this angel actually visualized balls that she was holding in her hands and she brought them together and she showed how both opposites were always in each event. So then she reversed her hands so that what was now the, what was once the positive polarity was now the negative polarity. And what was the negative polarity was now the positive polarity. And she said, and so you see the positive aspects of something can also be the negative aspect of the same thing. <laughs> and then she brought her hands back to their original position with a ball in each hand. She said, people's fascination with juggling comes from knowing that it all follows within a circle. So now she was tossing the balls. So one was following the other and the balls went faster and faster and the image blurred. And so it was hard to keep track of which one was the positive and which one was the negative ball. And so this goes for all opposites, including male and female. It goes for the elements of earth, air, light, and water. Everything is one at the basic level. And so everything can demonstrate the poles or polarities of itself. And so when we're trying to distinguish what is good and what is bad, just remember that the bad can be exchanged for the good and the good can be exchanged for the bad. And so then I asked, so why in our perception, what unknowingness makes us want to assign value judgment to an event, a person, or a place? And the answer came that we are in a level of evolution that we must first see that there are two extreme sides to everything, as well as many shadings in between, before we can see that everything is one. We have to see the separation before we can understand the oneness. If we began by understanding everything was one, we couldn't work backwards to see the separation. Just as in our physical expression on earth, we are in separation from God, source and each other in this reality. And very few people really grasp the oneness here because we, we aren't cohabitating in God. So we must understand the separation first. Now, some people get hung up in the separation. It's like a child that has discovered a new toy <laughs> and the child refuses to give up the new toy. These are the people that get hung up in the religious metaphor of good and evil and seek to define everything within the rigid context of good and evil. They are learning this lesson, but then they refuse to give up the lesson and see the greater truth. 
you know, that the lesson was leading them to. But people are beginning to understand now that everything is the same and everything that you would call good or bad are just facets of itself. And so then I asked, well, there are things that are clearly bad, clearly evil, clearly a waste here. And she answered, you have other information on that, which I did. And yes, energy can be wasted and destroyed. But what we're talking about now is the value judgments that we assign or perceive on the mental level. She's not talking about the obvious blatant physical expression of something that is so physically obvious of waste that there would be no disagreement about it. And even things like an earthquake or extreme devastation, the response to that earthquake or any anonymous natural disaster is the polarity of that event. And the polarity is almost always expressed, even if we don't see it at the time. And we may not even see it while we're living. On some other energy level, there is a polarity expressed. Just because we don't see the balance in energy doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. What she is talking about today is the mental interpretation of an incident or a person, which could be both good or bad, depending on the viewer's intent. And now this is where the choice comes in. You can choose what you think about something. People who always look for the silver lining are sometimes called Pollyannas. And there is an incorrectness to only looking at the positive polarity of an event to the exclusion of anything else. People who are blind to the opposite polarity of anything, you know, that was where that term originated. Something in us always knows the incorrectness of focusing on the positive to the exclusion of the possibility of the negative. And so the choice to focus has to come from the center, seeing both sides of an issue. And then this is a deliberate and knowledgeable choice. Now, take every tiny incident in your life could be interpreted this way. You're constantly making decisions. You're constantly working from the center point of knowing things could go either way, of knowing that both directions are possible in any action. So she used the example of when my horses get out and leave the pasture. The negative polarity is the possible injury to themselves, the fence, the gate, uh, damage to themselves when they're running around, possibly damaging other people's property. I mean, I know about those things. And those are the negative polarity of that event. But I am also aware that horses need a sense of freedom. They need that expression. And the fulfillment of that is expressed at times when they're not confined and not being controlled. And horses need to express that. And so I tend not to get as disturbed when they get out as I might have been when I was younger, when I was denying the negative around me. And she said, this has been a very concentrated lesson for me because I used to deny the negative. But it's why I'm a little bit afraid of going public with this work because I know that in a positive event, there's always a shadow. 
And in a negative event, there's always a bright side. <laughs> but I'm more personally comfortable with knowing the negative side of an event because then I can deal with that. But with a positive event, I need to know what the negative will be. And I can't always anticipate what that is. We can't. And so as we weigh the balance of potential harm versus potential good from any action, remember that our choice is in how to view it. And that can only come from seeing and understanding both sides of everything. And so I would love to hear your comments on this. And until I see you again, please be well and please be blessed. Take care, my friends. Like, share, and subscribe this, you know, subscribe, share it, you know, help my teachings get out. They just come through me. It's not about me. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.